Hi everybody, it is April and I'm in my craft room. And today we're going to make a quilt that could change the world. So I told you that this quilt could change the world and there is a way that you can take part in the changing of this world and I'll save that for a little later because, you know, I want you to watch my video. Today we're going to go through a really quick, quick, quick put together of a quilt. You can use a panel or like I'm going to do, you can use some piece of fabric that you just love that you look at and you think I can't cut it up I just can't if I cut it up it would just ruin it and this piece of fabric that I'm using is one of those pieces of fabric for me let me share it with you it is extremely busy but I don't care I'm going to take this piece of fabric I'm going to measure it and I'm going to add borders. And that is all I'm going to do. I have this red piece of fabric that's a blender that I found while I was out shopping. I have another piece of fabric that is a batik and it reminds me of water. For the outer border, I'm going to be using this. This is Lori Weir by QT Fabrics. And to me that looks like you know, droplets of water. And that is what our oceans are full of. And on that note, our oceans are also full of trash. There is a YouTuber. I do not know if you have heard of him or not. His name is Mr. Beast. It's an interesting name, I know. He is working on a nonprofit endeavor to remove the garbage from our seas. And he is calling it hashtag Team Seas. Seas being S E A S. His goal is to raise $30 million. And the group that he is working with has agreed to remove one pound of garbage for every dollar that he collects. I'll give you some more information when we get further into the video. This is where you have to put on your thinking cap or break out your calculator. Notice I'm breaking out the calculator. My thinking cap is upstairs and I'm too lazy to go upstairs and get it. Borders. I think we try to make them harder than they are. And when I say we, I mean me. I'm going to try and simplify. The first thing you need to do is measure your main piece of fabric. This is the way you calculate borders regardless of whether or not you're using one piece of fabric or if you have the center of a quilt that you're done with but you want to put borders around it to make it bigger to use more of the coordinating fabrics whatever reason you want to add borders to your project big or small this is how you do it this is how we do it this also applies to the way that you calculate your binding. You need to know the number of inches that it is going to take to add that fabric around your whole piece of fabric. You've got four sides, so you should have four numbers. I'm going to measure, and when I measure like this, I round up just to be safe. I'm always gonna round up, never gonna round down on borders and binding. So I'm gonna say this is 44 inches. So that means I have two sides that are 44 inches. I'm going to write 44 and 44. And that is going to be, it's 36 and a half inches. I'm going to round it up to 37. Again, always going to round up 37 and 37. You can break out your calculator and add all those numbers together. I've already lost mine. Or you can do them in your head. You can use your toes. You can use your fingers. 
you're gonna run out, but I'm, if there's anybody else around, you've got some dogs and cats, they've got one, two, what, four times four, 16 a piece. I, I, I think you could, by the time you get done counting all of them, you should be good if you wanna use appendages. That is 162 inches. All I care about right now is how much fabric there is from selvage to selvage. I just say 40 inches. If I cut a strip, doesn't matter how wide it is, of this, it will cover 40 inches of my 162 inches. I should be able to take my 162 inches and I should be able to divide that by 40. That gives me 4.05. And I said, I always round up. So guess what? I'm gonna cut five. That only tells you how many strips you need to cut. Now you have to figure out how wide you want your strips and whether or not you have enough fabric to make your strips the width that you want. I know I need five strips of fabric. I have 47 and a half inches of fabric available. Let's say I wanted to make my borders eight inches wide and I need five strips of eight inches wide. I would say 47.5 divided by eight equals, and I can get 5.93 strips. So I barely have enough, but I've got enough to do the five strips that I need. I'm going to go sew these onto the edge of my quilt and I will return shortly. As you can see, I have put the first border around my focal piece is what we'll call it. Now I'm ready to put my second border. The first thing that I did was I took two of the strips and I sewed them together with a quarter inch seam. Now when I measured to see how long my strip was going to be, I noticed that my seam was going to be right near the end of my piece of fabric. And that, it's not bad, but it might draw your eye to that particular corner where you have a lot going on. So what I did is I trimmed off one end just a little bit so that I will start with the shorter end so that I don't land so close to that end. So here I have all of this. It ends up landing here and I have quite a bit after it so that it doesn't look so bulky. So let me add my blue border and then we'll come back and put the final border on. I have now added two borders to this piece of fabric and it's gotten pretty big pretty quickly. Now I'm going to add the third set of borders, assuming that I cut them the right size. I cut out five. Let's see if that's enough. Oh my gosh. <laughs> really? A word of advice, don't do what I did. Make sure that you measure before you cut your borders when you have limited fabric. Don't do like I do. Measure first and then measure again and then cut your fabric. Trust me, I know. That being said, a motto that I have is, Kylie, help me out. My motto is, is all in the recovery. It is all in the recovery. So this afforded me the opportunity to do something special with these borders. I have a helper from the sea today, and 
This little dolphin wants to ask you to go check out hashtag TeamSeas.org and if you are so inclined to give to getting these seas cleaned up for our fellow sea creatures. Not that I'm a sea creature, but I would like to be a mermaid. My mess up allowed me to do something special with my borders and that is called cornerstones. So, since I ran out of border, I panicked for a moment, then I got over it, it was all good, and I added cornerstones at the ends so that it just gives it, you know, a little something extra. And I believe everything happens for a reason, so it must have been meant to be. What I should have done is measure from edge to edge of the border that I was adding to and then add a quarter inch on each end so add a half an inch and then I could determine how long to cut this outer border piece because I, I knew that I had cut this outer border at seven inches so I cut the corner squares at seven by seven that's not really what I did that's what I should have done what I did was I laid my border down on top and measured and then clipped my corner pieces in place and sewed them. So when you look, it looks like I meant to put this corner start on there. And as far as everybody knows, that's what happened. What happens in the craft room stays in the craft room. My quilt top is done. It's huge, which I've kind of started making bigger quilts. Not sure why, but just adding three borders, you know, and the cornerstones, which were a happy accident. And I have this large, beautiful, quilt top that I'm going to enjoy for years. I have a couple other examples to show you of where I have added borders and what they look like, just in case you're not all about, you know, the sea. Here is a butterfly, and it's not really a panel. You can use it as a panel, but it's really just part of a piece of fabric that has print on it. And I just added two borders. I just wanted you to see how adding borders can just highlight a piece of fabric that you may love. And it doesn't have to be hard. This is a panel. And all I did was add borders to it. And I think it turned out really cute. So tie-dye fish and I, oh, it's not a fish, it's a dolphin. Dolphins aren't fish, dolphins are mammals. Tie-dye dolphin and I would like to encourage you to go check out hashtag teamseas.org. I will put the link in the description below. And maybe you'll be inspired to donate a dollar to get at least one pound of garbage cleaned up out of our oceans, rivers, and off of our beaches. That's it. Have a great day. Eat some chocolate and be kind to everyone. Until next time, bye. no name fabric <laughs> there are multiple groups involved with this effort his goal is to raise <laughs> I would also like to show you I can't even <laughs>